<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here with another Switch-related tutorial. However, this one here is going to be more specifically for the original model, if you're going to be covering this. Now, don't worry, it doesn't have to just be the version 1 unpatched. It would be the core model, so that means it could be the unpatched, patched, or the Mariko units, as long as it's one of the core versions, just the original tablet like this. Although this one has been physically modified with a new shell on it here. However, if you're going to be doing these same steps with something such as a light or an OLED model, it's going to be a bit different getting into the console itself, but when you get to the actual SoC, the steps are going to be about the same here. I'm going to be showing you all, however, how you can open this up, repaste it, and close it all up from start to finish. That would allow you to not only clean out the console, but replace the old thermal paste in here with some nice, fresh, and probably better thermal paste to keep the SoC and the internals on the system nice and cool. This is really beneficial if you have a system that's running a little bit hotter. Plus, I would recommend if you've never done this with one of your original switches, specifically even like one from 2017 or 2018, it might be time to do that on that switch. Just because you got to realize these systems are getting older, the original thermal paste wasn't really the best, and I know there's people who they have their switches, the fans are always running, they're getting loud, so hopefully this can help out a little bit. So for anyone who's wanting to do this here, this is what you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need your Switch tablet right here, hopefully working and operating in proper condition. So you're going to need your Switch tablet, which we will have to turn off here once we get started. And we're going to need a few other pieces of hardware. Now, I personally use one of these iFixit toolkits, and there was only two bits that I needed in here. I needed the Tri-Wing Zero sized bit, and I also needed a Philips Zero sized bit. So those are the two that you really need to get into the console completely. You're also going to need a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I would recommend using isopropyl alcohol for this, like 99% or even at minimum 90 or 91% isopropyl alcohol. Some Q-tips would be really good to have on hand. And on top of that, because we want to clean the SOC incredibly well, using something such as a toothbrush that you only use for electronics and have some nice soft bristles on it, that would be great to have as well too, to get everything cleaned up real well. Having some sort of spudger tool was definitely helpful to really just literally scrape off some of the old thermal paste. And if you have some paper towels lying around as well, those are going to be helpful for some of those flat surfaces. Since we are going to be repasting the system, using some good thermal compound or thermal paste is going to be absolutely required. Now, there is better stuff out there than this, and you can use really whatever you want to as long as it works well. I prefer to use Arctic MX4 just because, well, it works really well, and that's what I have on hand. So that's what I use here. But if you want to use something else, as long as it works and it gets the job done well, that is totally up to you. You're not stuck using this here, but this is what I personally use. Finally, the last thing you're going to need here, which I would highly, highly recommend using, is some uh, sewing needles, of all things. Yeah, this seems to be kind of a random bit here, but in order to pop off the IHS from the SOC once we get inside, there's going to be several different latches that are going to be a, a bit microscopic there, and we need to unlatch them to actually fully get into the system itself. And the best way to do this is using some really thin sewing needles. So I'm going to have a link down below in the description for everything that I'm using here, but these ones personally, I ended up getting at a grocery store of all things so it's nothing really electronic specific here but again it's going to make your life much much easier if you have some really thin sewing needles on hand with all that being said here we have all the hardware we have the switch let's go ahead and get into the console itself all right now that we have the switch available in front of us the only thing we need here is the tablet itself the first thing we can do is turn it off so go ahead hold down the power button and turn off the switch completely we're also going to need to disconnect the Joy-Cons themselves because we're only going to need the tablet for this. Lastly, we can go ahead and remove any game cards, any micro SD cards, and disconnect any cables that you have to the Switch itself. Again, all we need is the tablet. Now go ahead, take the Switch tablet, flip it upside down on a flat surface, and let's go ahead and tear into this thing. Let's work on the tri-wing screws first of all. One is going to be in each corner, and there's going to be four tri-wing screws. Just go ahead, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, pull them out, 
and that's it. Once that's done, you can put the tri-wing bit to the side because the rest of the screws for the entirety of this system are going to be Phillips until we put it back together. You're going to have to come to the left and right where the Joy-Con rails are going to be. On each side where a Joy-Con is inserted, there's going to be five screws. Now, you only need to unscrew one of them, which is going to be the middle one. So on each of these sides, go ahead and unscrew the middle screw. However, a big warning right here, these screws in particular strip incredibly easily. So you're going to want to use the right bit, you're going to want to use the right amount of pressure and be very slow and careful. If you just go crazy here, you're going to strip these screws incredibly easily. Next up, look at the top of the system next to the fan grate and there's going to be one small Phillips head screw. Go ahead and remove that. Go down to the bottom and there's going to be two Phillips head screws. These are also small and they're going to be to the left and right of the USB port. Be gentle removing these, but go ahead and unscrew these two. Now lift up on the kickstand for the micro SD card and the smallest screw is going to be here. Go ahead and remove this and keep it somewhere safe, just like all the others, but don't mix them up. Lastly, to now remove the back plate, at this point, go ahead and place the switch face down and then start removing the back plate. You can do this by kind of gently lifting on the sides and then going from the bottom upwards. And it might be a little bit difficult here, but you should be able to get it. I will say on the bottom, be very careful. There's going to be two plastic bits near where the USB port is, and these two bits can break off incredibly easily, so you're going to want to be gentle on the bottom. But once you end up loosening it up just enough, you should be able to pop it off with ease. Now in order to remove the metal shield, there's going to be six screws that you are going to have to remove. Go ahead and check out the video right here to see the location of all six of them. They're all going to be the same size thankfully, but remove all six screws. Let's go ahead and remove the micro SD card module. You're going to notice it's going to be this piece right here and there's going to be one screw securing it in place. Just go ahead and remove this screw. Once it has been removed, you can then gently remove the micro SD card module. It is going to be slotted in, so you're going to feel it pop out, but you just want to be gentle with it. You can now remove the metal shielding. I recommend just grabbing a little bit of it from the left and right sides and popping it off gently. And as you can see, it's been removed, so you now have access to the internals of the switch. If this switch has never been taken apart, you're going to notice this glob of thermal putty that is going to be on the inside of the shield itself, as well as on top of the heat pipe. We're going to go ahead and remove that, but if you want to remove it now, I recommend you can get rid of most of it just by taking a flat spudger tool of some kind and just gently scraping it off. And you can of course use something like paper towels, q-tips, and isopropyl alcohol to clean the shield itself. Don't focus on the heat pipe for now, but if you want to clean the shield, you're more than welcome to. Now that we have access to the switch's internals, go ahead and navigate under where the battery is, and you're going to notice the hookup right here. Just go ahead and take a tool and gently disconnect the battery, so that way we're not going to have any power going to the switch itself. Now the real goal here is going to be hiding underneath the heat pipe. So with that, there's going to be three screws that are going to be securing it in. Go ahead and remove all three of these screws. Once that's been removed, here's the thing, near the top of the heat pipe, you're going to see two strips of adhesive. And I'll be honest, I never really have the best luck removing these cleanly and properly. So if you want to take some time and cleanly remove these, you're welcome to. I, I usually end up kind of sort of ripping them in the process, and I know some people might be cringing at that, but as long as they're still there, it should mostly do the job just fine. But either, but either way, whether you remove them or not, you can just gently lift up on the heat pipe where it was secured and then start removing it and you should be able to wiggle it out of the console itself. Now typically before I work on the heat spreader here, I do like to clean off the old thermal paste so you can just scrape off the big stuff and then you can use something like q-tips and isopropyl alcohol to clean up the old stuff on the top here. Now you might think that you're done and this is where you repaste, but no. Unfortunately, there's still going to be one more layer and this is 
where I'm going to be going microscopic here because I'm just going to be honest with my naked eye, I cannot do this next step. If you're able to, props to you, and if you have a heat spreader by chance that is a little loose, that might be a little lucky for you or even unlucky. I know this one on mine was loose before because I have repasted this switch once, but it was loose before I tried this, so I was able to get in with ease, but this time around it is secured. So I'm going to be going microscopic on this, and to get this opened up, this is where you're going to need those needles. So go ahead and grab a small needle and start getting to work. Zooming in right here to the switch, getting nice, up close, and personal, we need to access the SOC. And in order to do that, we have to remove the heat spreader. So you're going to notice there's going to be these latches all around the heat spreader. And you're just going to do a little something like this. You're going to go slow, Take your time, be gentle with it, but you're going to want to take a thin needle and you're going to want to find where each latch is. And then you're going to just pop it into where the latch is. Don't go too deep because you really don't want to scrape the motherboard. And then you're just going to very gently pry and loosen the latch. Just undo the latch from the frame itself. Once you're able to do one of them successfully, you should be able to get a little bit of a feel for this. You don't want to go all out and completely remove or even loosen these, but you just want to unfasten them just enough that they disconnect. Once you work on one, go over to the next one. And the nice thing is you don't even have to do all the latches. If you can get all the latches, that's cool. But typically in my experience, there's typically one or two latches that give me a little bit of issue. And usually the way I roll, if I'm able to get all of the latches except for one, I'm able to get in there just fine. So again, what you want to do is go all around the heat shield itself, work on loosening all the latches if possible, and then once loosened, we can then zoom out and we can remove the heat spreader. To remove the heat spreader, you're going to notice that even though it's been loosened, it's still going to be attached to the frame that it's sitting on. So you can just take something such as a flat spudger tool or even your fingernail if you want to and kind of get over to where it's at from one of the corners and just kind of start poking at it, kind of lift up on it, and you should notice that it will just pop off. Uh, be careful though because it can quite literally pop off. So here we are, we are now exactly where we need to be. So now we have actual access to the SOC. At this point, we can now work on properly cleaning it. So for this, typically I like to come in here and use some isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips. Now if it's really gunked on from the factory, sometimes I'll take a pointy plastic tool or you can even use something like a toothpick and go around the dye and remove some of the excess. But for this here, since this is some thermal paste that I had applied before, Thankfully, it's still liquidy, it's still good, but we're going to remove it with some isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. Just go ahead, saturate your Q-tip well, clean up the old thermal paste, remove as much as you can, and you're going to have to probably do this a few times with different Q-tips. Now, once most of it is removed, there's also going to be some stuck in the capacitors, and I like to fully clean this. So for this, I like to take a toothbrush that I only use for electronics, Make sure it's something with soft bristles or some other equivalent, and then saturate that with some isopropyl alcohol and clean this up really well. You're not going to want to apply really any pressure here, but you're just going to want to go quickly and cleanly and clean this up. And as you can see, it makes a big difference here and it cleans up incredibly well, removing most if not all of the old thermal paste and dislodging any of the old thermal paste that's been stuck. Once that's all been removed, you can still clean it up more if you'd like to, but it should be in a pretty good spot as long as it's clean, shiny, and does not have the old thermal paste on it anymore. So at this point now, we can take some nice, fresh, new thermal paste and apply it. For this here, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be using Arctic brand MX4. Not saying it's the best stuff out there, but it is personally what I use because it has worked well for me, and I still have a pretty large tube of it. Now, everyone has their own different way of applying it here. What I personally like to do is just put a bit of a glob on like this, and then once you apply everything and screw everything and pressure it back in place, it's going to spread evenly across the die and across the surfaces. So I really never spread it manually here. 
But once you have a glob on it and once you have it to your liking, you can then start working it backwards. However, even though we remove the heat spreader, we do have to remove the old thermal paste from there. Do not ever reuse your thermal paste. We're going to put fresh new stuff on. So if you have not already, go ahead and take some Q-tips, some isopropyl alcohol, and you're going to want to clean up the top and bottom of the heat spreader and remove the thermal paste. Typically, in my experience, the top of the heat spreader, I'm able to get incredibly clean, but the bottom of the heat spreader, the one that actually makes contact with the dye itself, that one there, I'm usually able to get most of it off. You can keep going at it and keep cleaning it, and there's still going to be a little bit of thermal paste there. However, you can do a pretty good job removing most of the old thermal paste, and that's going to be good enough. Once the old thermal paste has been removed with isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips, you can then work backwards and put the heat spreader back onto the frame to cover the SOC. Just make sure we are all good at this point and you're done working on this. To put it back on, it's thankfully much easier than removing it. And even though the buckles are going to be loose, it's still going to snap on in place and stay there thankfully. So really all you need to do is position it properly, pop it on, and really you're done at that point. It's able to stay nice and snug and secure on the frame and in the console. Now with that completed, we're going to take our thermal paste yet again, and we're going to apply it on top of the heat spreader on top of where this copper shim is, because this will make contact with the heat pipe itself. I personally do the exact same thing right here. I like to take a glob, put it on, and then once we apply and pressurize everything, it's going to smooth out naturally. So there we go. We have our glob on top of the heat spreader, and now we can apply the heat pipe. Now, if you have not removed the old thermal paste and thermal putty from the heat pipe itself, now would be the time to do so. Like I said earlier, use some Q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol, get it nice and clean. And once it has been cleaned, go ahead and get it back in place. You're going to want to make sure it's positioned and snug properly on top of and next to the fan, and then go ahead and push it down on top of the heat spreader itself. You really don't need to use any pressure for this because we're now going to take the three screws that are required and we're going to screw it back in place. And you should notice that when you do this, a little bit of thermal paste is probably going to come out of the side. That just shows that it is spreading and applying properly, which is why I didn't spread it myself since we're going to have this do the work for us. Real quick here, because we want our switch to still work when we put it all together, before you end up putting the metal shield over it, go back over to the battery, find that cable you disconnected, and gently reconnect it. If we do not have this connected, you're going to be disappointed when you go to try and turn on your switch. Now you might think you're done applying thermal paste, but you are not done. This here some people say is optional, but because it was like this from the factory, I like to still do this. On top of the heat pipe itself, where the putty used to be, go ahead and take your thermal paste and just put a line of it right here. Something like this seems to work for me pretty well, and just like the other two times, I don't spread it, I just make sure that I apply everything back in place, it's clean, and once it is pressurized, it's able to spread properly. But once you get a line like that, you should be okay. With that all positioned, we can now finally put the thermal paste away because we do not have to apply anymore. But we do need to put the metal shield back on. So if you have not cleaned up the old putty from the heat shield, make sure you do that now. Usually I just scrape off the big bits and then clean up the rest of it incredibly well with isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. Then you're just going to want to gently put it in place and we're going to continue to work backwards. There were six screws that ended up holding this in place. Make sure you put all six screws in. However, if you're confused about the screw placement near where the micro SD card slot is, you can go ahead and put that module back in place first. It's up to you. With the micro SD card module, you're just going to want to put it in place and you really need to get a feel for this. Make sure it connects properly through this hole to the motherboard itself. It is socketed and once it is socketed and properly fitting, you can then take one screw and screw in the module right here. From there, you're going to take the other six screws that were required for this and just go around and screw them in. Go ahead and check out the video here if you want to see where the placement is going to be for each screw.
With that done, we can now take the back plate and plop it onto the back of the switch. And we're now going to put the rest of the screws in place. Remember for this here, you're going to take the shortest, tiniest screw, and that's going to go where the micro SD card goes. So make sure that is screwed in. Once that's done, you can close up the kickstand and then work on the other screws. There's going to be two screws that go where the USB port is, so make sure these two screw in place. And you might notice that these ones don't stop. Just make sure you get them fitted there, but if they don't stop screwing in, that's okay. The same type of screw is going to go on the top of the console near where the vent is for the fan. Then you're going to take the final two Phillips screws. These are going to be the thick ones, and one is going to be going on each side of the console where your Joy-Cons pop in place. Again, remember these two screws are the most sensitive ones because they strip so easily. So go slow and be gentle when you screw each of these in place. And when it stops, you stop. Finally, we can put our Phillips bit away and get the tri-wing bit out. And there's going to be four tri-wing screws. And this is pretty easy to guess where they're at. One tri-wing screw goes into each corner. Just make sure you screw them all in properly. And from here, you're completely done. To test this out, I'd recommend put a game card in if you're going to use a game card, put in your micro SD card, go ahead, flip the switch right side up and turn it on. If it turns on properly, it's working and you're able to use everything, congratulations, you have successfully taken apart, cleaned up, and fully repasted properly your switch. So now it should hopefully run a little bit cooler. And if you have one of those original models, especially from 2017, it is going to benefit from getting some nice new thermal paste. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, as I always say, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.